All right, guys, in today's video, we're working on a 2000 Toyota Camry CE. It's got the Toyota 5S FE four-cylinder engine in it. And what we're going to be working on is the camshaft cover is leaking. Not really bad from this view, but if we come around in the back here, I'll show you it's leaking pretty profusely. So let's move the camera around. I'll show you the back view. So if we look around the back, guys, you see all this wetness. This is all fresh oil running past this this uh, failed seal between the camshaft cover and the cylinder head. So it's most obvious if we zoom in right around here, we can see it's all super wet, but it's actually coming out across the whole back in different places. It's running all the way down the side of the engine, it's getting onto the subframe, and it looks like it's a problem that's been going on for a while. So the hardest part of this is actually going to be cleaning all this up after we're done. Let's go ahead and get started on actually fixing the problem first. All right, this job's going to start with cleaning, guys. I'm going to use some brake clean, but it's so bad, especially in the back. I'm just going to start getting some of this stuff off now to ease our problem because I don't want to be spraying a lot of this brake clean after we put a new seal on here. I'd rather spray this chemical on, the solvent, while we've got the old seal on here. So I'm going to go around the perimeter, just getting it cleaned up on the outside mating surfaces all the way around. All right, now that we've got it cleaned off, let's get some stuff prepped up. We're going to need to get this harness out of the way, so we're going to use a trim tool. If we zoom in here, this just slides onto the bolt that's protruding through this cover. I'm just going to get that off so that we can move this out of the way. Just enough to get this out when we're done. Next thing we're going to do is we're going to pull all of these spark plug boots. You're going to grab them by the top here where you see these ridges. Don't grab them by the wires. Pull all these out. We'll clean these off separately later. We can also see we've got um, a broken clip that's not staying in here. We'll replace that when we get the cover back on. Gonna have to pull this out of this retainer here to get enough slack to remove it. We might even have to disconnect it over there. This one just doesn't have any slack at all. Well, we're gonna end up replacing both of these, which is not uncommon because it's so old and brittle. We'll pop through and get that in a minute. All right, next thing we're gonna do is this PCV valve. We're gonna need to remove this hose here. Pull the clamp off first. Then we're going to grab a pair of hose pliers and work it off. But before we do that, we're also going to get the clamp off of this one. All right, now we'll pull this hose clamp off. get a grip on it. There we go. All right, now all of our clamps are out of the way. We'll work the hoses off. First, we're going to get the adhesion off. And then we're going to try to get this guy to let go. We're going to go nice and slow because these are 23 year old hoses that we do not want to be replacing. It's bad enough, we're going to have to replace another clip. Come over here and we'll get this guy off from the PCV attachment. The reason we're grabbing it here is I just think this will be a stronger, um, more resilient connection than here because the valve itself is plastic. All right, we're just going to leave it like that for now because it's going to put too much tension on here and break this. We've got the adhesion broken. We've got it separated. When we pull the valve cover off, we'll get it off the rest of the way. All right, guys, let's get this short spark plug wire off of here. Take a pick. You can see there's the clip that holds it onto the retainer. If we zoom in, we're just going to reach the pick underneath. 
and we're going to pull it off so that we can pull it off the coil. And now we can remove it from here. All right, so now we've got these four retaining nuts. That's all it holds this on. They're 30 millimeter. So we're just going to loosen them up with a ratchet with a 30 millimeter socket. so that we can sp spin them off by hand. And that's all that retains this particular design from Toyota. And underneath here, there's going to be a sealing grommet. I'll show you that as soon as we get these washers off. All right, so we're going to take these washers off. We'll clean them up later because they've got some oil residue on them because this is another source of leaks. And then you can see now inside of here, there's a grommet that sits on top. Let's see if we can get one of these off with our pick before we pull the cover off just to kind of give you an idea what we're looking at here. All right, so this sits on top and is part of the oil sealing service system. We're going to be replacing these as well. All right, with all of that out, the only thing we have left is remembering to pull this off so we don't break the PCV and getting it to separate from the engine. At this point, everything's been disconnected. I'm going to grab a small pry bar, and we're going to start breaking the seal. It shouldn't take much. There's a pry point built in right here. Just going to kind of tug on it a little bit. So this side is already off. This side is off as well. So the front is loose. Now we don't have a real easy way to get in at the back. And the other thing we've got is we've got some debris here. If we come up on the front, you can see we got a little bit of dirt in here. We're just going to brush that out before we pick it up because as we turn it to disconnect this, we don't want any of this crud falling into the head. You can also blow it out before you pull off your uh, plugs, but I didn't see it before, so I'm going to have to get it after the fact. We're just going to do this on each one of these. I'm not going to hold the camera for every one of them guys, but we just want to get all this loose crud out of every one of these out of the way. Where we've got a lot, we're going to put the grommet back in just to cut down on the chance of anything falling in. We'll get it cleaned out with the grommet in place, then we'll pull the grommet back out and get the rest of it. All right, now that we've gotten our dirt contamination out of the way. Let's get this hose over here. Let's get this up high enough that we can separate this hose the rest of the way. Super, super gentle with this thing so we don't end up having to replace it.
Come on, baby. Let go. There we go. All right. Mission accomplished. So we're going to need to clean this, and we're going to need to replace this failed seal, and then we're going to clean up around the edges. We're going to reseal around here. I'll show you through the service manual what we have to do here, and we're going to be particularly watching for as we got this off, right? You can see if we zoom in here, we got a little bit of plant crud that was on the corner, got into the engine area. We'll make sure you get all that out. We're going to inspect that none of that fell in. We're also going to make sure that we blow out these holes after we put this back in in case anything fell down where the spark plugs are. So that's what you just want to do. Careful inspection as you clean all around these spark plug tubes at the base for any debris. When you get done, I'll remind you again, we got to blow it out at the end, but all around the perimeter. All right, let's get this old seal off. We're going to use a pick. Just want to be careful we don't damage the aluminum. We're going to pry it out of the recess that it sits in. It may come out in pieces. This one looks like it's going to come out in one piece, which is good. Easier cleanup. All right, now we can just start cleaning up. Now, we're not going to try to, to get this back down to a little piece of sealant down there. I want to get rid of that. We're not going to try to get this back down to the shiny metal. Uh, some of this varnishing is, is just how it is. We're just going to get some of the loose crud that you see here, the carbon. Work in cleaning all that off, not the varnish color. All right, so if we zoom in here is the cleaning process, right? So to get the broken off pieces of these old clips off, just use a pick and then break it into little pieces that you can work out, right? Until you have all of that out of there. Similarly, this one that was old and brittle and broke off while we were working on it, same thing, right? We're just gonna, you wanna just don't damage the aluminum threads and you want to hear that kind of popping sound because that's these pieces breaking up. We're just going to do that so that when we get the new clip in there, it can fully seat. If you don't, then it won't fully seat and you run the risk of it breaking off as well. All right, we're also going to take some time to clean the filler cap area. And then after we're done with this, we're going to pop the PCV valve off and we're going to inspect the grommet that seals it. All right, let's work this PCV valve off of here. Again, nice and slowly. I suspect this has not been removed in 23 years. So we're doing this for two reasons. We want to possibly replace the grommet, but we also want to see if it's still effective. This was newer, it would just pop right out. All right, so we've got it out of the uh, retainer over here. So we can twist it if we need to. Wait, oh, okay, good. So, you hear that clicking noise? It's okay, but we will shoot some cleaner in there. And then this seal, though, is super brittle. So we will peel this seal off and replace it as part of what we're doing on this, this job. Just like the other seals, you can see it's, you know, it's cracked. It should not have cracked just removing it. It's just an indication that it's old and brittle. And part of just doing a complete job when you're doing this particular type of repair. All right, so this is just to show you where we're at with the cleaning. So this exterior level of clean is what we're after. We're not after every little dirt speck and, you know, smudge. We want to make sure that where we're going to put these clips in is all been cleaned out. So hopefully you guys can see all the way down the bare aluminum at the bottom of these. We're all ready for the new clips. You see, I'm not going to waste a lot of time trying to get this 23 years of varnish off out of here. I'm more interested in the groove that the seal is going to sit in. We did get the loose carbon, though. So now we're going to turn our attention to the cylinder head.
All right, so if we zoom in on this corner here where this camshaft is, you can see there's some old RTV here. So you're also going to want to get in with a pick and just get all this slowly picked and scraped off, right? You don't want it flicking into the head area, but we're going to need to get all this off to have a good sealing surface. There's going to be, this is only going to be located on either side of the cams on both sides. All right, we're on the, pa on the driver's side here, guys, and you can see we still have this kind of debris from the old sealant. So you just want to be real careful that you don't get this stuff inside the engine. So we're going to scrape it off the top here, work it out. And we're just going to try to get it to fall down behind the engine and out of it. So we're just going to keep working at this, and then we'll be ready to reassemble. All right, if we zoom into the mirror we got here, we can see the other side of this camshaft piece. And we've cleaned off. We're almost done. We just need to do a couple more wipes. But we've cleaned off the debris from the previous sealant. All right, we're going to take a little bit of brake clean on a rag. And what we're going to do now that we got everything wiped down, we're just going to do a final wipe down all the way around with brake clean on the rag to get this nice and dry and free of any oil so that we get a good seal. So I'm just going to go all the way around and then we'll go ahead and mount the seal. All right guys, let's consult the service manual, 2000 Toyota Camry. Let's go into the 5SFE engine mechanical section. All they say about removing the cylinder head cover is to remove the four nuts, grommets, and then you remove the head cover and gasket as a unit. They have a hint on here. We didn't pay attention to it because we're replacing them, but if you're not, those four grommets I showed you, arrange them in the correct order so that they can be reinstalled into their original positions. This minimizes any possibility of oil leakage due to reuse of the grommets in different positions. So just a note to keep in mind if you're going to go do that. Putting it back together, we're going to skip over here, installing the cylinder head cover. So they're going to tell you to remove any old um, fixed in place gasket material. And they're showing you these areas here, four on this side and four on this side that we're going to need to replace. And they tell you to use this part number 08826-triple-odd-80. That's actually an old discontinued number back from when this was a, you know, a newer manual. But we can find the quick reference to that, and we can look at this tech tip from 2010 and see that they cross-referenced that 08826-triple-80 to 00295-00103. And that would be this guy right here, 00295-00103. So we've got a tube of that that we'll be using once we pop the uh, seal on this that we'll be using to redo that. It comes in black, and then there's an orange one is what the other number is, but this particular application calls for the black. So those eight places on either side will get the sealant treatment. One of the things that we'll be checking is what we're tapping on here are the semicircular plugs that are sitting in these recesses. And they also have this same material in them. And so what we may elect to do is pop these out and freshen that up. I'm going to go take a look at those now that everything's cleaned up to see if they are um, brittle. If they are, we might want to replace that. If they look like they're okay, then we're not going to disturb them. And then we'll just go seal the top. So what you're seeing here and, uh, excuse me, what you're seeing here and here are our two separate seams and then what you're seeing here and here are two other seams and two of those four seam areas have one of these plugs sitting in them. After we deal with that we're going to install the gasket to the head cover then we're going to reinstall the head cover with the four grommets and nuts and they're telling you that the torque is 33 foot-pounds on those nuts. Now that's for a particular range of engines that is covered in the video title. Earlier engines had a different torque value this engine has 33 foot-pounds. Then they tell you install the grommets so that their markings are as shown in the illustration. So what they're showing you here with these four arrows, they're trying to tell you that there's a little kind of a stub on this guy and they want you to make sure that you see that when you put it on. So if we take a look at these, and these new ones are part number 9480-325. And we take a look at one of these and they, these come in a a larger quantity than four so when you go pick them up they're going to be sold in a packet like this. You can see there's a little notch right there 
And what they're trying to tell you is you want that notch oriented in this position. And then when you torque it down, this guy should only move between this 15 degree window, right? That's all they're trying to tell you, just for the best seal. And I think that is it on the advice. Yep, that's it. Pretty simple information from the service manual and only one torque value to remember. So let's go ahead and get this going. All right, guys, we did a check of this plug, and he's in there really nice and tight, so we're not going to disturb him. So we're going to run our sealant per the service manual along the seam for this guy. Got to work him up through the, uh, there he goes, work him up through the nozzle. All right, so we're just going to coat this whole seam here, here, and then over here as well. This is why we spent so much time trying to clean all the old seal debris out of here so this would stick really good. And then we're going to go grab a mirror and we're going to go do the same thing in the back. Oh. All right, guys, here's just a shot of the back side so you can see that sealing material applied. And this is just a view if we zoom in on the driver's side. Same four places. Here's the three in the front. And then if we look in the mirror, we can see the one in the back. We elected to go a little bit more liberally in the back because we had very limited access to begin with. All right, let's get the top back on. All right, guys, we're going to be putting in a Toyota 11213-74020 gasket on this cover. You guys watch my channel enough, you know that we either go OEM or we go home. Just work it into the grooves that match the pre-molded shape of the seal. This is nice and puffy compared to the old one that came out. And of course, nice and soft versus the other one was kind of stiff. All right, let's get it mounted. Now that everything is pressed down far enough, we need to get it mounted before our FIPG material sets up. All right, now we're just gonna slide her back into place. around throttles and everything else will be in the way boom sits right down in place now we're going to take our actually we need to put our seals on i'm sorry guys we need to go put our grommets on and then we'll put our nuts on all right let's get these guys into the position that the service manual indicated with these little notches facing in the correct direction. And then we'll put our retaining nuts down. And I'll go ahead and snug these up with a 30 millimeter socket and we'll come back and torque them. All right, we got all these in here. We're going to do the one in the middle first. We're just kind of snug him up. Then the one on the outside passenger side edge. Snugged up. Then the outside driver. And then the inside passenger. Then we're going to switch to our torque wrench. The same order. We'll do the 33 foot pounds. And we're just watching our grommet to make sure as this tightens up, just like the service manual said, that it doesn't turn more than that amount, that 15 degrees. There's that one. And so how can you tell that you did that right? Well, I'm going to show you right here. So you come down here and you see that little ridge right there has moved within that 15 degree arc. That is him right there. So we're good. Let's do the other two. I'm 
watching that little nub on this one move. All right, so you can see once again, it's right there. All right, so we're all torqued down. So let's go ahead and hook up our hoses. Yeah. All right, we're gonna put this hose back on. And then we're gonna get the clamp back into the original position. Looks like a piece of the clamp has settled under this insulation. Let's work it out. Okay, perfect. All right, let's put our filler cap on and let's get a grommet for our PCV valve in and put it back in. New grommet for our PCV valve is a Toyota 9480-18001. It looks very similar to what we pulled out before. All right, now we just need to mount our PCV valve. All right, oil filler cap going back on. Let's work our harness back on to that position there. PCV valve. Now, we might need to put a little oil on here to help this. Don't know yet. Let's try without first and see. Now we're going to need a little bit of lubrication on there. So we're going to get a light, light film of oil on there so we can pop this guy back in. And then we'll be able to slip him on there. All right, we got a light film of oil on here. Let's see if that makes life any easier. And it does. So we need to get this tab back here where it's going to fit in. And at the same time, we gently, very so gently, want to work this guy on here as well. There we go. All right, that guy's back on. And now we just need to pull the clamp back up where it goes. Just going to move the tool back a little bit to clear the uh, manifold piece that it needs to sit on right there. Okay. All right. Good. All right, so everything got put back together without a problem. So all four torqued down, 33 foot-pounds. All of our grommets are in our 15-degree sweep. Hose for the PCV valve with a new grommet installed. This hose over here, this part of the emission system is also installed. We've got our harness back where it goes. Last thing we've got left now are the... Uh, spark plug assembly wires and then we've got this guy that we had to remove over here so what we're going to do is going to clean up the ends of these before we reinstall them all right guys so what you're looking for here is anything cracked or torn on these boots and all this dirt needs to come off right and then what we're going to do is we're going to blow compressed air out of the spark plug wells before we reinstall them. All right, guys, we're gonna blow out um, these four spark plug wells to see if there's any dirt or debris in them before we put the boots back inside. All right, now let's just go ahead and get our boots back in. All right, now before we put these in, we're going to put a little tiny worm of dielectric grease around the entrance. This will help us maintain a moisture-free seal. This one we're going to need to run back into the quail like we removed it from until it snaps on. And then we're just going to repeat this process with each one of these. You don't want a lot, just enough to go around the edge. All right, so I'm going to go do that on the other two, and then we'll inspect our work because we're just about done.
All right, with the spark plugs done, guys, we just got a couple of more things to do. One is we pulled this PCV valve out of here, if you recall. And so if you look on, pull the camera over at, at the other side here, you remember we have this little tab that sits in this raised boss area of the cover. Just want to make sure we got this guy fully seated. And then the last thing was she's got a broken retainer on the spark plug wires that goes into the cover here. And then we had the one when we were working on it break off here. Now what I was trying to do is just do this right here. I was just trying to get the spark plug wires out of this, but then they get this old. They're very fragile, very fragile. And I'll give you the part numbers here in just a second. So the part number on this little guy in the front is a Toyota 90469, so 9049-05006. And these are these 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 holes look like they're threaded, but these parts are not. So if we zoom in here, we can see that it's actually square. And so that guy just sits right in like this and you push him in, just like that. And when you saw it, you want to kind of grab it along the edges to prevent it from breaking. All right, so there's that one. And then the one that sits back here has got four positions. That's a 9469-05008. Just push him and basically zoom in here, same deal, right? You can see it's square. And so actually, when you pull these out, if you have to pull them out, you don't pull them. You unscrew them. You'd actually unscrew this guy. That's how. That's the preferred way to get this out without damaging it. Is just to unscrew it. All right. So let's put this guy in, and then we'll put our cables in. And with this guy's, this job is now done. So I hope this helped you out. We've got the leaks addressed. We've also took care of some of the damaged hardware, new grommets, new seals, everywhere that we needed them. We should have this leak solved. We've got to have a little bit more to clean up in the back. I'm not going to waste time showing you guys that. We'll hit it with some gunk, and we'll also hit it with some, some other degreasing chemicals. Take it for a drive after a good rain. That should take care of all the accumulated pileup. If you got questions or comments on what we did in this video, go ahead and leave them below, and I'll try to help. If this video helped you get the job done, saved you some money by have, being able to do it yourself instead of taking it to a shop, I'd appreciate you paying it forward by hitting that like button. And as always, thanks for watching.